global warming is increasing extreme weather events and some of that is entirely expected but some of it is coming as a surprise. Now the expected part is things like warming, general warming causing more heat extremes. That's obvious even to a layperson that that would happen and indeed we find there is now five times more record-breaking monthly heat waves than in an unchanging climate. Another very uh, easy logical part of uh, warming is that you get more extreme rainfall events because a warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture. That is what we as physicists would call thermodynamic effects. They are, they are basically simple. But there is also other more insidious changes going on and that is what we call the dynamic effects uh, and with that we mean for example effects on the atmospheric circulation, the winds in the atmosphere so to speak, that are also changing in response to global warming. And uh, some of that really came as a surprise, I don't really anybody expected that. And uh, what I'm referring to is uh, the role of planetary waves and changes in the jet stream in the atmosphere uh, in causing extreme weather events. Now, what is the jet stream? The jet stream is basically a band of uh, strong winds in uh, the upper troposphere, that's uh, the lower part of the atmosphere, that is circling uh, the whole latitude band in the mid-latitudes. And uh, this band of winds is clearly visible in uh, the wind velocity measurements. It has been called like a river of air, uh, so to speak. And uh, it basically uh, flows along the strong temperature difference between uh, the subtropics and the pole. Now, what are planetary waves? Planetary waves is a form of a wave which is caused by the Earth rotation and the Coriolis force and they occur both in the ocean and in the atmosphere. And in the atmosphere they are very easy to visualize if you look at the shape, the path of the jet stream in the atmosphere because this jet stream sometimes makes big meanders, uh, meandering north and south, a bit looking like a river indeed. And these meanders are caused by the planetary waves. And so there are alternating regions of uh, northward flowing and southward flowing winds in the atmosphere. And uh, these planetary waves in the jet stream are intimately linked to extreme weather events on the ground. It has been uh, shown quite clearly by uh, statistically analyzing weather, extreme weather in relation with planetary waves that high planetary wave uh, amplitudes, so very large waves, uh, strong waves are associated with extreme weather events on the ground. Uh, a couple of prominent examples are the European heat wave of 2003, which actually caused about 70,000 fatalities. So this is, uh, it was no small thing. It was one of the worst natural disasters ever to strike Europe. The Russian heat wave in 2010 linked to the record-breaking Pakistan flooding event and uh, several other events like, uh, for example, US heat wave in 2011, in July 2011. These are all events that have been linked to very large planetary wave amplitudes. Now, the question, an interesting question is, when and why are these planetary waves becoming so large? And uh, at my department at the Potsdam Institute in recent years, we have developed an explanation for that based in the equations of atmospheric dynamics that are well known, have been well known for decades. And from those equations, my colleague Vladimir Petukov has derived um, a resonance equation for planetary waves. 
and basically these waves can be uh, subject to a resonance just like a forced pendulum. That's an example that is well known to any physicist. If uh, you try to push a pendulum to make it swing, then uh, if you push it in the right frequently, frequency, like pushing a child that's on the swing, if you push it in uh, exactly the right frequency, the, the favorite natural frequency of oscillation of that pendulum or of the swing with, with your child on, then you can make it swing uh, very strongly. If you push in the wrong rhythm, that is not going to work. And the same applies to the planetary waves in the atmosphere. If the driving force behind these waves, and this driving force comes from the distribution of uh, sea and land and mountains and, and flat uh, areas, it's what we call orographic forcing, and it partly comes also from the temperature distribution in the northern hemisphere, the kind of alternating warmer and colder areas. And so that's what we call thermal forcing. If these uh, driving forces coincide with the natural period in which uh, the planetary waves want to oscillate, then they can grow very large. And uh, now the question is, when do such uh, resonance conditions arise? And it uh, turns out that there are several ingredients that we need for that to happen. And uh, one of them is uh, for what we call a waveguide to form. These are two latitudes between which these planetary waves are basically trapped. Uh, if we don't have these so-called turning points at two latitudes, the planetary waves will disperse off towards the pole or towards the equator. But if they are trapped between uh, these turning points in this waveguide, uh, then they can grow to very large amplitudes. Now, if you look at the data of the last decades, is the presence of such resonance conditions in the atmosphere, is it linked to the existence of very large amplitude planetary waves? We've done that analysis and the answer is clearly yes. And uh, this resonance equation even predicts how large these waves can grow. And we can find, we can find that in most cases, the prediction uh, of how large the amplitude of these waves will be uh, is pretty well spot on. One of the uh, insidious things that uh, makes these planetary waves so powerful in causing extreme weather on the ground is that when these resonance conditions are present, not only does the amplitude of these waves grow very large, but uh, they grow what we call quasi-stationary. That means they stop moving forward. Normally, you see these planetary waves by the succession of high and low pressures moving in, in Europe from the Atlantic, for example, and then they stay there for a couple of days uh, and then they pass over. But when you have these resonance conditions in the atmosphere, they basically grind to a halt. You get a, a non-moving pattern of high and low pressure. Depending on where you are with respect to that planetary wave pattern, you can get either extreme rainfall or you can get extreme hot and dry and sunny weather like in the European heat wave in 2003. Another case in point is that Russian heat wave in uh, 2010, where it was, uh, there was a, a major drought, major fires around Moscow in Russia, but at the same time record-breaking rainfall events in Pakistan, because Pakistan was in, in a different phase of that wave pattern uh, as compared to Moscow. Uh, another case in point was the uh, record-breaking uh, flooding in the Balkans in May 2014, uh, in the Sava River Basin, which caused about 2,000 landslides and mudslides and uh, many fatalities and uh, was uh, really one of the worst natural disasters uh, to occur in this region. So now, we, uh, now that we have explained uh, that under certain resonance conditions, uh, we get very large planetary waves and that these large planetary waves uh, that are in the jet stream 
uh, are associated with extreme weather events and partly because the waves then grind to a halt. They, they keep there maybe for uh, weeks on end in the same position. The big question that we need to ask is, has this always been like that or is this changing? And indeed, uh, there is uh, several data analysis that show that indeed that is changing and quite possibly in response to global warming. We find that there are more of these resonance events, uh, increasingly so in the last 15 years or so. Uh, we also find that the jet stream is uh, getting more wavy, that's what data analysis show. And uh, there is probably also a reason behind that, at least the theory, if you look at what makes these resonance conditions in the atmosphere, it suggests that it has to do with uh, the temperature decline from the subtropics into the Arctic. And uh, for the last 15 years or so, the Arctic has really taken off in warming. It has surpassed the, the global mean or the northern hemisphere average rate of warming quite substantially. And that is why that uh, temperature decline from the subtropics into the uh, pole uh, has been getting weaker and weaker because of that disproportionate polar warming. And the theory pr would predict that that is favorable for resonance occurring in the atmosphere. And so that could well be the expla explanation why we see more resonance conditions lately, uh, why the jet stream is becoming more wavy or becoming more weird, the global weirding some people have called this, and why overall the data also show the jet stream having slowed down somewhat. And that is just one of the ways in which uh, global warming is surprising us in finding ways of uh, causing more extreme weather that we had not expected before.